Well, Brain-computer interface is, is a fairly recent development uh, of technologies uh, as research goes. It was, it was developed in the 1970s uh, in US at DARPA. Um, and it looked at uh, trying to uh, decipher the brain activity and assess what is the intent of, of the person. Now, for our research, what we're looking at is we're concentrating on uh, developing assistive technologies for paraplegic of um, vegetative state people, either through accidents or through ALS or other diseases. Now, the idea is that we monitor their brain activity and decipher their intent. We create an interface with a computer which takes the information, processes it, and deciphers what the intent of the person is. So when I give the machine feedback, it will display to the user and to me, the practitioner, what the actual command that was communicated. So in this case, the move forward command was communicated. So right now, this is sent over the local area network in the building to the robot in the other room. So it is really trying to read the brain. So for example, if the person wants to have uh, the curtains opened and they're very uh, disabled, and they would click on a virtual keyboard or a menu uh, which says open uh, curtains and the curtains would open. Engineering is an applied science and we at the Faculty of Engineering are very much um, seek to do that, we seek to implement that. We seek to make our programs very real and actual. Engineering is um, all about winning wealth from Mother Nature. And wealth doesn't necessarily mean economic wealth. Um, your well-being, um, your state of health, um, happiness, all that is wealth in a sense. The one aspect that everybody sees is that of the actual production, right? whether it is a civil engineer who's designing and erecting a building, they're working to standards. Then you have uh, another level, um, and this pertains mostly in the, in the first world countries, of research type engineers, and they work with scientists to bring new knowledge um, to impact upon, upon humanity one way or the other. And so those two levels work together then. You know, after human resources, land is the second most important resource. We've come up with a lot of policies that will guide CARICOM um, governments to help them with their, their planning, uh, especially with respect to how land could be best, be best be utilized. The Department of Geomatics Engineering has, has worked with almost every department on the campus. We're using participatory 3D modeling to allow us to um, get information about the heritage, the history uh, of East Port of Spain. Again, we involve participants, uh, stakeholders, to come in and inform the 3D model about various types of uh, historical uh, buildings and other events. And that information can then be used to create a historical timeline um, for the East Port of Spain area. The Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering deals generally with research that involves anything in the built-up environment that like roads, buildings, structures, things like that. Coastal engineering is a fairly modern or recent sphere of research. We deal with various ministries like the Ministry of Works, Hydrographic Division in the Lands and Surveys Division so that we can pull all the ideas and thoughts together and apply them to the coastal environment. I study coastal morphodynamics. It's the interaction of uh, waves and the sediment and uh, how that um, changes elevations on the beach. My research could help to identify where rips will be found and uh, how safe it is for swimmers to go out and onto the beach. What we have done over the last period of time, we would have set up a new unit called the MMERC. And essentially that unit was designed to foster greater linkages and interaction between the department and the industry. We go out to the industry seeking for projects and problems that they may have as well as they can come to us and identify areas that they need further research done in. I saw from my colleagues in engineering that they were giving advice to the Ministry of Works and Transport on the collapse of the road uh, in, in Manzanilla and how they should be addressing some of those issues. There's a particular component that we've been working with who have been seeking to develop alternative fuels. And the implications of this are is if these fuels are properly developed, um, it's, it has a regional impact. And they've come to us in terms of how can we, how can we develop that fuel in terms of testing, um, looking at the long-term effects, feasibility analysis, 
actually looking at the impact of the fuel in engines and on the vehicles in, in general, on a much wider scale, as well as for wider power generation. In the chemical engineering department, we do teaching and research in three main areas of industry. Um, the overarching is chemical and process engineering, and there we're involved in anything you know about manufacturing, petrochemicals. My research within the Petroleum Studies Unit, I look at recovering oil uh, in an environmentally friendly way. I use reservoir simulation, so it's mainly computer-based. We look at injecting oil, injecting carbon dioxide into the ground to recover more oil, right? So we're able to increase our oil production and at the same time reduce our carbon dioxide emissions nationally. Trinidad Tobago is the home of the steel pan. It's a very, very interesting in instrument from a scientific perspective. It is something new. The aim in the end is to have Trinidad Tobago be the first port of call for anything called pan. This is the, um, the FI. And the FI was given a, a marketing name, that's its marketing name, percussive harmonic instrument. One of the areas that the engineering faculty has really made a great strides. It's basically a keyboard version for a panist. Pan. You actually have bass and all too. That's one. But it's also, as we are finding out from research elsewhere, that it's a very natural form. The layout is also very musical in nature to give them more dimension because with the press of a button, as you've heard, um, you can change the sound that you are making. And if you connect this to a computer, which you can, you can score your music. You can also modify the tones of the sound that you're making. So now you have an infinite spectrum on a canvas that you can create a whole range of sounds. I think most of the devices that we take for granted like cell phones, gaming systems, etc., will have aspects of BCI where it'll be immersive technologies. So you're actually part of those devices and games and they will communicate to you without voice. One of our newest programs is the Master's Program in Engineering and State Management. This program has been running for the last five years and has so far trained competent uh, engineers in areas of reliability engineering as well as maintenance and operation. And many of them have actually worked and have, have contributed in development of our energy companies in Trinidad and Tobago. Scientists are for finding out new knowledge, finding new knowledge. Engineers are for using that new knowledge and, and, and finding applications for it.